yo, thanks for that. Stephen Weigsback is the president and CEO of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. Hey, Mr. Stephen, how are you this morning? Good morning, guys. How y'all doing? Well, we had you on, what was it, last week, maybe 10 days or so ago, and you said the governor's, in fact, I think I remember, this is about a quote, the governor's fiscal cliff is really more like a speed bump. Is the governor now, with his announcements yesterday, trying to turn the fiscal cliff, your speed bump, into a, oh, let's be topical, a fiscal tsunami? Yesterday was an embarrassment, to be honest with you. Let me explain what happened yesterday. Most folks are living their lives and not paying attention to the minutia in the Capitol, but let me just try to explain what happened yesterday. Yesterday, the administration proposed a budget that had all of the horrible cuts you could imagine, but literally, as they were delivering it, they had pages in the presentation that said, we do not support this budget, do not pass it, we do not want it. So they basically told everyone this is not a real document. And the governor went and testified and said, there's not one cut in this entire budget that I want to make, not one. So for two years, we've known the fiscal cliff is coming. For two years, we were hoping that our administration and the executive branch were doing what they could to make their agencies be more efficient, be reform-minded. And what we found out yesterday is for two years, they said, don't worry about it, guys, because when budget day comes, we're just going to put the scariest cuts we can. We'll get lauded in the press for doing so, and then we'll guilt everyone that revenue is the only solution. So I thought it was an embarrassment. Yes, would, to be with you. We, don't, we don't know what the real answers are because we can't get real numbers. Would it be fair to say that, in your opinion, John Bell, yesterday, um, is he threatening the people of Louisiana? Is he saying if, if, if the legislature keeps saying no, if they're going to be so stubborn, I will cause as much pain as I humanly can? Well, let's talk about this legislature has to bring me a plan and they keep saying no thing. If I was a legislator yesterday, I'd be very irritated. So the budget is presented. It's so not worth taking serious that even the administration themselves, as they're saying, is basically saying don't pay attention to this. Okay, so administration has found nothing that they can cut. Not one dollar that they support cutting. So they must want a tax-only solution. The governor said he wants a billion dollars. But even in their tax solution, the questions came up yesterday. Well, now they're saying that no personal income tax, which is the right decision because of what the feds did. So they don't want personal income tax, and they don't want the fifth penny. There's no other way to get to what they're going to. And so they don't provide a plan on a revenue-only solution. They say that there's no plan on cuts. They're, they're leaving no plan for anyone to even be acceptable, yet they will get lauded in the press for offering this Tuesday budget. And so the legislature sitting there with the condition, okay, we've got a tax plan that doesn't add up. We've got a budget that we shouldn't take serious. And now you're telling us, as a part-time legislator, to go and find a billion dollars of cuts within your own agencies that you can see the documents we can't, and put together a tax plan when you basically said, I don't really accept any specific tax, yet I want a billion dollars. It is an absolutely untenable choice. He knows it, and he doesn't care because he knows he'll get great press headlines just for putting him in this box. I mean, it's, a, it's an embarrassing day. This isn't about solutions. This is all about politics. Well, Wags, let's, let's talk about that. What are the solutions? What are some of the answers? We want that penny to go away. We don't want income taxes to go up. What do we have to do? That, the, the, the governor yesterday, in my opinion, pretty much put the legislature in a, in a no-choose solution when it comes to that penny, some version of that penny. He left them no choice. So, I mean, the solution, there's not one simple light switch solution. There's not. You can't just go and cut a billion dollars, and you can't just raise a billion dollars. That's why yesterday, when it was obvious, the last two years have not been spent trying to refine agencies or budgets. That's why it's so frustrating, because they're not helping at all on trying to find cuts. In fact, they say there's not one cut they support. That's the frustrating part. So it's left to outside groups or part-time legislators to go inside agencies to find that. You know, I mean, that's just not realistic. If they're not wanting to help find reductions or reforms, it's hard to get there. But having said all that, you know, the legislature now has to work with this budget that doesn't work. And so they've got to start finding solutions. And so, one, any revenue that they do put forward, they better dedicate it specifically. The first thing I would do is look at that tops hole it's okay, that's $200 million input in tops. The first 200 they raise should go right back in there and dedicate it to it because you can't trust that the administration is going to use it to fund tops. Wags, let me, a- let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. When you look at our budgets over historical time, and we haven't asked you this, our budget now is approaching $29 billion. It's the largest ever. And, and, you, and the governor's team will say, and, and Robert Adley was here, and he'll say, well, that's because of so much federal money we get, which is a good thing. Twenty-eight billion for a state that's losing population. Can can you help explain that to me? 
The the budget actually, you're, the twenty eight billion is the number they presented yesterday. But again, you can't use that number because that is filled with the reductions that they don't want people to pass. They're going to find ways to escalate that. That budget will be north of thirty billion dollars by the time July first. Our largest budget that. ever. Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Why do we need and, that that huge and of a last budget? Last year was the largest collection of state dollars that we've ever had. Now. What they will say is, no, 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 general fund's not that high. But look, we take taxes from people in a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's a tax. Sometimes it's a fine. Sometimes it's a fee. Sometimes it's assessment. When you take all of the dollars into the same bucket that we take from Louisiana people, it's the largest collection we've ever had in the state's history last year. And so that's the, that's the truth of it. And so we haven't been able to spend within the means that our economy can produce. I know it's hard. It is frustrating. And it takes partnership on both sides to get the right solution. But when you have one side come out with a budget and say there's not one cut we support and say we want a revenue-only solution, yet we can't provide you any numbers of the real taxes we're asking for, I mean, how are you supposed to work with that? And so if you're a legislator, you got to go sit down with your part-time staff and figure it all out. Because yesterday, all it told, all we learned less yesterday was the administration is not going to be providing solutions. They will just be providing judgment and second-guessing everything the legislature does. And is, I hope this is not a new trend. Is this John Bell just doing his best Chuck Schumer impression? <laughs> well, I don't know. Schumer has his own special category in my heart. I don't know if I'm ready to go there. <laughs> but, um, in other words, you know, is he saying, I don't want a deal, I want it all, and and sort of setting a negotiating point that he knows the other side won't? Is he, is, does he have the cards? Is he bluffing? I, I, I think he has been trained that over the last couple of years, he doesn't have to provide specifics because he'll get lauded in the press for just being open to anything. And so that's why he presented a budget yesterday. He's like, look, these are cuts, but I don't really stand for these. And I need a billion in taxes, but I don't really stand for any specific tax. He doesn't stand for a specific because he has learned why do so. He Only he gets criticized if he gets specific, so he stays in the generics and he forces and goes out and, and berates legislators for not getting specific. Mm. You know, he's been trained that he gets good headlines doing it, so why rock the boat? That's the problem we have right now.